Victoria Rickman hardly looks like the sexy femme fatale prosecutors portray her to be when she goes on trial for the murder of her lover, William Carter. After spending nearly four years behind bars awaiting her day in court, Victoria, now 34, is almost unrecognizable as the woman who allegedly used her sex appeal to seduce and manipulate Carter and other men in her life. Among those men, Jeremy Fordham, who at first denies in court that the married divorcee had once sent him pictures of her breasts. You're saying that the defendant never sent you pictures of her boobs? No, I don't think so. But prosecutor Sheila Ross shows them to him. Picture of her chest. <laughs> yeah. Nothing further. Even County Police Lieutenant Robbie Ray admits on the stand that he'd been beguiled by Victoria and that they had a flirtatious text exchange after he'd helped her with a legal matter. And then you said, And you won't need to service me for a little help. And what was that in reference to? She stated that William Carter expected her to service him. And the prosecution alleges that Victoria had used her feminine wiles to lure Carter to her Atlanta home the night she shot him dead. She may have promised him sex. We'll never know. There are some things about a homicide you'll never know because, as they say, dead men tell no tales. But Sheila Ross says the evidence does, and that nine gunshots is a classic case of overkill. And when he falls down, she finishes him off from behind. And the final shot is to his head. Shot to the back. Defense attorney Amanda Clark Palmer argues that Victoria killed Carter in self-defense after he unexpectedly turned up at her home and raped her in the early hours of the morning. Will Carter is on top of Victoria Rickman, raping her. And she gets the gun out and hits him. Before firing nine bullets into him. And Palmer plays Victoria's emotional 911 call for the jury. She says Victoria's distress sounds convincingly genuine. I begged him not to hurt me. I just, I just want him to be okay. He's not. There's just blood everywhere. Imagine how powerless she felt when William Carter, who was taller than her, heavier than her, and stronger than her, was raping her. But the prosecution alleges Victoria had also accused numerous men of rape and threatened to make the same allegations against others, including William Plunkett, when he tried to throw her out of his apartment. She told me that if I called the police officers, she would tell them that I tried to beat her and tried to rape her. And the prosecution alleges Victoria had also falsely claimed Carter raped her on a previous occasion just four months before she killed him. Get the f out of here. Seriously, go. But in this wedge, the prosecution drops this bombshell. Actual video of the incident shot by Victoria herself with her cell phone. Go, Tori. Do it. Go. Do it. I don't want to do anything but get you out of here, dude. It shows her trying to get back inside Carter's home just moments after she says he raped her. Why are you naked? Dude, Why are you, who are you who are you on the dude, phone with? Dude. We know one thing for sure. He wasn't naked because he raped her, because why would she have to ask that question? The prosecution shows the rest of the 60-second video, saying it doesn't look like an encounter between a woman and a man who just raped her. You just showed up at my house, and I told you not to be here. I did not. You told me dude, to come here. Tori, I didn't tell you to be here. Get the out of here, dude. I'm scared of you. You terrify me. You're already doing this. Get out of here. Girl. Why are you acting like this? Victoria refuses to leave. Right now, open the no. door. You is upstairs. No, it's not. All my stuff There's is upstairs. There's nothing upstairs. All you are is a toxic web of lies. Stop it. Stop. Get off of me. Stop. I'm not letting you in my house. If you do this, I'm going to call the police. Do it. The prosecution claims the truth of what really happened is in the tape. They were in a fight. 
she got mad. And when he managed to kick her out of the house and he called the police, she cried rape. And it's chilling and it's disgusting. It's damaging to women, but that's what she did. The prosecution uses the video to further discredit Victoria's claim that Carter also raped her the night she shot him. That's one of the things that you heard from the beginning from Will's mouth himself. You are a toxic web of lies. All you are is a toxic web of lies. And I could not have said it better myself. And I submit to you that Will Carter Jr. himself is still in the web. He never got out. He, he was in the web when she murdered him. He's still in the web because she sent him to his grave as a rapist. She said he was a rapist. The prosecution also produces photographs taken after the alleged rape, saying they show no sign of bruises or other injuries indicating Victoria had been beaten and raped, as she claims. That's what the doctor said. That's what the treating physician said that night. But the defense puts Victoria's friend Brittany Morgan on the stand to support allegations that Carter had physically abused her in the past. It looked like someone had grabbed her arm. The bruising was, it was kind of, it almost looked like fingerprints on the side. Brittany testifies she'd seen bruises on Victoria's arm on two occasions. The second time was just before Carter's killing, when she also overheard an angry phone call Victoria got from him. He was very angry um, and just yelling and screaming. I could hear bits and pieces of the conversation because he was screaming so loudly. What was Miss Rickman's demeanor after that? It completely changed. Her whole attitude, her face, uh, facial expressions changed. It's like she's seen a ghost. And on the night of his death, the defense argues that Carter had gone to Victoria's home in a jealous rage after earlier catching her talking to another man on the phone. He is angry at her. That's how he was feeling that night. He was lashing out at her. Amanda Clark Palmer quotes furious texts Carter had sent Victoria just hours before his death. You're sad, scary, and a horrible person who I try and continue to try to love and respect, but it's impossible. You're vicious and horrible to me, and all you want to do is blame me. And the defense presents crime scene evidence supporting Victoria's claim that Carter came to her home and violently raped her. There are signs of a struggle in this bedroom. The lamp is knocked over. The noise machine is knocked off the nightstand, and it was on. Up next, uh, the verdict is in. Sir, have you reached your verdict? We have, Your Honor. Was it calculated cold-blooded murder or self-defense? Was it unanimous? Yes, Your Honor. Victoria Rickman is presumed innocent, and that can only be overcome if the state meets their burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt, which they have not done in this case. The prosecution claims otherwise. She finished him off with a shot to the head. That is cold-blooded murder. 